The third member of the Citadel Council, the Turians, are one of the most formidable and disciplined races in the Milky Way galaxy. There is a well-known saying, if you want to win a battle, bring a Krogan, but if you want to win a war, bring the Turians. To understand more about the Turians and why they have developed one of the strongest military forces in the galaxy, you need to look at their history. Now some points in this are a little generalized for the purposes of this video, but rest assured I will be going into a lot more detail in my Mass Effect history series to come. At about the time the Salarians and the Isari were forming the Council in 500 BCE, the Torians were embroiled in a bitter civil war. The Unification War, as it was later named, began with hostilities between the colonies furthest from the Torian homeworld, Palavan. These colonies were run by local chieftains, many of whom had distanced themselves from the hierarchy. Without the galvanizing influence of the government, colonies became increasingly isolated and xenophobic. Colonists began wearing emblems or facial markings to differentiate themselves from members of other colonies and open hostilities became common. When war finally broke out, the Torian hierarchy on Palavan maintained strict diplomacy and refused to get involved. After several years of fighting, less than a dozen factions remained and the hierarchy finally intervened. By that time, the chieftains were too weak to resist and they were forced to put an end to fighting and renew their allegiance to the Torian central government. Though peace was restored, it took several decades for animosity between colonists to fade completely. To this day, most Torians still wear the facial markings of their home colonies. As a point of interest, the Torian term barefaced refers to one who is beguiling or not to be trusted. It is also a slang term for politicians. In 700 CE, the Citadel Council made first contact with the Turians around the time of the Krogan rebellions and persuaded them to aid in the war. After, the Krogan responded to the initial Turian offensive by devastating Turian colonies using weapons of mass destruction, or in a strange tactical twist, directing giant asteroids at Turian colony worlds, causing massive destruction in their wake. Hoping to demoralize the Turians, instead it had the opposite effect, as the Turians vowed to stop the Krogan from ever becoming a threat again. Realizing that the Krogan will never give in as long as they can replenish their fighters, the Turians unleashed a Salarian engineered bioweapon known as the Genophage on the Krogan homeworld of Tachanka. As a result of the Genophage, the Krogan population started its decline and the rebellion eventually ended within 90 years. In recognition of their contribution to the rebellions in 900 CE, the Torians were invited to join the Citadel Council to fulfill the role of galactic peacekeepers. The Torians have the largest fleet in Citadel space and they make up the single largest portion of the Council's military forces. As their territory and influence spread, the Torians came to rely on the Salarians for military intelligence and the Asari for diplomacy. In 2157, the Torians were the first to make contact with humans in an incident known as the Relay 314 incident. They discovered human explorers attempting to activate a dormant mass relay, a practice forbidden by galactic law after the Rachni Wars, and attacked. Over the next three months, tensions escalated and the Torians prepared for a full-scale war against humanity. This, however, drew the attention of the Citadel Council. The Council intervened before hostilities could escalate further, revealing the existence of the greater galactic community to humanity and brokering a peace between them and the Torians. The Torians were forced to pay reparations for their lack of diplomacy. However, mistrust and lingering animosity still remains between the two races. Turians typically stand over six feet tall, have two long, proportionally thick fingers, and an opposable thumb on each hand, each tipped with talons and a set of mandibles around their mouths. The most distinguishing feature of Turians is their metallic carapace. The Turians evolved this trait as a defense against the greater levels of solar radiation that penetrate their homeworld's weak magnetic field. Turian features are avian, making them resemble humanoid birds or raptors. However, unlike most Earth avian creatures, Turians are viviparous and give birth to live young. In 2165, David Anderson claimed that Turians reminded him of the evolutionary link between birds and dinosaurs. Turians are also recognizable by their voices, which have a distinctive flangeling effect. Figured I could do more good on my own. 
Males and females do not differ greatly in physical appearance, but female taurians lack the crest of horns found in the males of the race. The lifespan of a taurian is comparable to that of a human. The taurian homeworld palavan has a metal pore core, generating a weak magnetic field and allowing more solar radiation into the atmosphere. To deal with this, most forms of life on Palavan evolve some form of metallic exoskeleton to protect themselves. Their reflective plate-like skin makes Taurians less susceptible to long-term low-level radiation exposure, but they do not possess any sort of natural armour. A Taurian's thick skin does not stop projectiles and directed energy bolts. Although life on Palavan is carbon-based and oxygen-breathing, it is built on dextroamino acids. This places the Taurians in a distinct minority on the galactic stage. The Quarians are the only other known sapient dextroprotein race. The food of humans, Asari and Salarians, who evolved in levo-amino acid-based planets, will at best pass through Taurian systems without providing any nutrition. At worst, it will trigger an allergic reaction that can be fatal if not immediately treated. Taurians come from an autocratic society that values discipline and possesses a strong sense of personal and collective honour. While Taurians are individuals with personal desires, their instinct is to equate the self with the group and set aside personal desires for the good of all. Taurians are taught to have a strong sense of personal accountability, the Taurian honour that other races find so remarkable. Taurians are taught to own every decision they make, good or ill. The worst sin they can make in the eyes of their people is to lie about their own actions. Taurians who murder will try to get away with it, but if directly questioned, most will confess the crime. Taurians have a strong inclination towards public service and self-sacrifice, so they tend to be poor entrepreneurs. To compensate, they accepted the mercantile volus as a client race, offering protection in exchange for their fiscal and trade expertise. The Taurian military is the centre of their society. It is not just an armed force, it is an all-encompassing public works organisation. The military police are also the civic police. The fire brigades serve the civilian population as well as military facilities. The Corps of Engineers build and maintain spaceports, schools, water purification plants and power stations. The Merchant Marine ensures that all worlds get needed resources. The Taurian government is a hierarchical meritocracy. Incredibly, Taurians have 27 citizenship tiers, beginning with civilians at the bottom. These tend to include client races and children. The initial period of military service is the second tier. Formal citizenship is conferred at the third tier after boot camp. Higher ranked citizens are expected to lead and protect subordinates. Lower ranking citizens are expected to obey and support superiors. Promotion to another tier of citizenship is possible and generally based on the personal assessments of one's superiors or core rankers. Throughout their lives, Taurians are ascended to the higher tiers and are occasionally demoted to lower ones. The stigma associated with demotion lies not on the individual, but on those who promoted him when he wasn't ready for additional responsibility. This curbs the tendency to promote individuals into positions beyond their capabilities. Settling into a role and rank and staying there, however, is not considered stagnation or looked down upon. Instead, Taurians actually value knowing one's limitations more than being ambitious. At the top are the Primarchs, who each rule a colonization cluster. The Primarchs vote on matters of national importance. They otherwise maintain a hands-off policy, trusting the citizens on each level below them to do their jobs competently. Compared to more rigid species like humans, Taurians enjoy broad freedoms. So long as one completes his duties and does not prevent others from completing theirs, nothing is forbidden. For example, there are no laws against recreational drug use, but if someone is unable to complete his duties due to drug use, his superiors step in. Judicial proceedings are interventions. Peers express their concern and try to convince the offender to change. If rehabilitation fails, Taurians have no qualms about sentencing dangerous individuals to life at hard labour camps for the state. 
Although they lack the brutality of the Krogan, the skill of the Asari and the virtuosity of the humans, the Turian military has formidable discipline. Officers and NCOs are lifers with years of field experience. Enlisted personnel are thoroughly trained and stay calm under fire. Turian units don't break, even if their entire line collapses, they fall back in order, setting ambushes as they go. A popular saying holds, you will only see a Torian's back once he's dead. Boot camp begins on the 15th birthday. Soldiers receive a year of training before being assigned to a field unit. Officers train for even longer. Most serve until the age of 30, at which point they become part of the reserves. Even if they suffer injuries preventing frontline service, most do support work behind the lines. Biotics are uncommon. While admired for their exacting skills, biotics motives are not always trusted by the common soldier. The Torians like to use more traditional weapons and tactics and prefer to assign their biotics to specialist teams called cabals. Command and control is decentralized and flexible. Individual units can call for artillery or air support. Strategically, they are methodical and patient and dislike risky operations. Tradition is important too. Each legion has a full-time staff of historians who chronicle its battle honours in detail. The oldest have records dating back to the Taurian Iron Age. If a legion is destroyed in battle, it is reconstituted rather than replaced. The Taurians recruit auxiliary units from conquered and absorbed minor races. Auxiliaries are generally light infantry or armoured cavalry units that screen and support the main Taurian formations. At the conclusion of their service in the auxiliaries, recruits are granted Taurian citizenship. Finally, let's look at Taurian religion. Although Taurians have a strict moral code, their belief in individual responsibility means that concepts of good and evil are simply the individual's choice between egotism and altruism in any given decision. They have no concept of good deities that encourage noble behavior or evil ones that tempt individuals to misdeeds. Taurians believe that groups and areas have spirits that transcend the individual. For example, a military unit would be considered to have a literal spirit that embodies the honor and courage it has displayed. A city spirit reflects the accomplishments and in industry of its residents. An ancient tree spirit reflects the beauty and tranquility of the area it grows within. These spirits are neither good nor evil, nor are they appealed to for intercession. Taurians do not believe spirits can affect the world, but spirits can inspire the living. Prayers and rituals allow an individual to converse with a spirit for guidance or inspiration. For example, a Taurian who finds his loyalty tested may appeal to the spirit of his unit, hoping to reconnect with the pride and honor of the group. A Taurian who wishes to create a work of art may attempt to connect with the spirit of a beautiful location. Taurians enjoy absolute freedom of religion and can practice whatever appeals to them so long as it does not impede anyone's ability to perform their duties. There are many practitioners of the Asari Siaris philosophy. Since opening dialogue with the Human Systems Alliance, some Taurians have even embraced Confucianism and Zen Buddhism. So there you have it, there is everything that we know so far about the Taurians. Hope you guys found this video helpful and interesting. I'll be back again next Monday with another Mass Effect lore video, this time looking at the Solarians. Hope you guys have a great week, take care, and as always guys and girls, happy gaming!